All right, Cody's back. <laughs> God. Oh, speaking of God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. Nice I know. Lead in. That was unintentional. I'll go with it. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take your suggestion on this. For those of, uh, in our audience who are heavy religious, I highly suggest you turn back now, forever hold your peace. Because I'm I'm not going to go into anti-religious strength or anything like that. I'm not, I'm not even going to go in that territory. However, we are going to talk about Left Behind. And more than likely, religious jokes are going to be thrown in here. So if that offends you, turn back now. Although if you watch our Noah review and don't care, then you're perfectly fine where you are. <laughs> So, yeah, we just got a left behind. I didn't get one cage rage moment. I am so disappointed. It is an incredibly subdued Nicolas Cage moment. You you could have just put any actor in there and it, it would have been fine. fine. He, like, he didn't bring anything to the table. Look, I'm just going to I'm going to come out and say this is by far the worst movie I've seen this year. I mean, this is worse than Haunted House too. It's really bad. It, yeah, it's it's not good. It is not the worst movie I have ever seen. No, no movie I've ever seen, but it's but pretty bad. It it's not a movie that probably should have came out in theaters. No, like it's the way like everything about this movie looks like just screams low budget. Right down like the there's so many companies listed in the very beginning of the movie that I've never heard of. Yeah, as soon as I saw <laughs> those logos, I'm like what? Like, what? No, I th don't. That's your first red flag. It's like when we saw Wizard of Oz, like the uh, Legend of Oz, and the same thing. It's like, who the hell are they? Oh, they made this movie. Oh, God, they made this movie. Well, Actually, come to think of it, these two words are kind of tied now. Yeah, I, just, it. I, I, was, I have no idea who these companies were. Um, the first thing that really did strike me is the opening scene looks exactly like early 90s. Very it does. Very early 90s. Like, it looks like a 90s Nickelodeon sitcom. You could have taken footage from the 90s and repurposed it into this video and it would have been perfectly fine. It's like that's the way it is. it's like an it's like a very religious apocalyptic episode of Boy Meets World. <laughs> that's kind of what this movie is. Because like the music is weird, the lighting is weird, the, the camera is weird. The music comes in at some weird places. Like out of nowhere we have porno music and then it's this weird heavy go like and the movie ends with like a weird gospel song <laughs> as we watch the world burn. Although <laughs> the only like remotely interesting song is when the lady is on top of the bridge. And I'm like, okay, I can it's still super religious, but it's like Okay, okay, I can almost... It sounds like a song that could have been in a different movie. Everything else, you could have gone online to one of the free soundtrack websites and just pulled some stock music and kind of... I mean, it's like, it I mean, when I watched this movie, I expected one or two things to happen. I thought it was going to be so bad that I was going to laugh my ass off the whole movie, and that kind of happened in times. Uh, or B, it was going to be so mind-numbingly terrible I wanted to gouge my eyes out. Oddly enough, it's kind of in the middle ground. Yeah, it <laughs> wasn't... It was definitely not... Unbelievably bad as um, there's some parts that are unbelievably bad. There were some parts, <laughs> but I grew up watching a lot of the B-rated films on Sci-Fi Channel on Saturdays because that's what I did with my life, <laughs> and I could definitely see this being a TV movie that super low budget. Just that's what it should have been, though. There's, it has like... every flavor and feel of that. Also, although God is definitely, definitely a big part of this movie, and we will get into that later. <laughs> The plot has nothing to do with God. It's Nicolas Cage on a plane. Yeah, That's it, the is, whole movie. it is. We have a plane emergency. Okay. We need to land. Okay. That is that is what the movie is. God just happens to be the reason for the plane emergency. And here's my issue. And this is a sentence I never thought I would ever say. Can we please get some Satan up in this Jesus movie? <laughs> please, can we Satan this up? <laughs> Because honestly, it was just God saving people. Well, because that's what, like, I know, that, I know that happened in the Left Behind books. I never read them or anything like that, but I did see the crappy Kevin Cosner version of the same movie. That's the movie's rebooting, oddly enough. And which is actually better, which is weird. This is but, a reboot? This is a reboot. There's a whole, like... Why would you reboot this? <laughs> very good question. Do we need to do two times two? Maybe this is our punishment. Actually, God <laughs> is the one who made this movie, and this is his punishment for all of us, to be like, you suck so badly, you need two of these. Yeah, there's like a whole directed video uh, se Left Behind series. I think it's our Kevin Costner. Or is it Kevin Costner or uh, the guy from Waterworld? Uh, 
I know who you're talking about. You know who I'm talking about. I forgot Isn't his name. Isn't he the same guy? Aren't they both Kevin Costner? I'm pretty sure Kevin yeah, Costner like, is in Waterworld. Yeah, that's what I meant. That's the same guy that's in Waterworld. So it's okay. like, I was making sure, sure it's the name Kevin right. Costner. Oh, because so it is Kevin Costner. Yeah. Kevin Costner started in those movies, and they were terrible, but they had evil corporate Satan in there. So it's like, can we get a little bit of that in this movie, please? Well, we did have evil corporate man who ended up having a redemption moment with druggy lady. Oh, yeah. What the hell was that all about? Like, there are so many subplots of these characters. I don't give a crap about any one and of them. only if they're in first class. If you are not flying oh, yeah. first class, if you're a coach, fuck you. <laughs> you know, nothing out of the coach here. people. Nothing. We just got a few panic faces. Like, what's going on? And what's some lady on? who lost two kids. Oh yeah, because of course I don't know. Like I just remember being, a, being watching the original movies as a kid and being really depressed whenever like, the kids. I didn't give a crap about the kids. Even as a kid, I didn't care about the kids. But I always got really depressed whenever I saw the dogs walking by themselves. Yeah, the dog sitting next to the dead owner or, like, or saved oh. saved owner. I I don't know how to respond to the disappeared people. Like I don't know what term I should apply to them because technically they're supposed to be in heaven and saved. But when I think of people in heaven, I think of them being dead. So I'm like, everybody got dead. <laughs> I'm okay with that. The zombies. The zombies. 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 Or the, uh, what's that term they were using the world's end? Oh, you didn't see the world's end, did you? The world's end? It was a comedy that came out. It, okay, I'm going to take it as a no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there's a scene in that movie where they're trying to, they find out their whole old high school uh, town has been taken over by robots. And they're trying to come up with a name we call the robots. And they're all also really, really drunk. So <laughs> there's... Comes back in so far with a, the main hero comes back in the conversation having about this and he goes, so far nothing's gone better than blinky blinky blind man <laughs> or something like that. Blinky blinky blind man. <laughs> or it's like uh, blink, blinky blinky ink man or something like that. I'm going to go with dead people <laughs> because they died. They disappeared. Or did something. I don't know. It isn't, yeah, yeah, it, it, it's the rapture. Which, <laughs> which they never ever call the that's rapture. That's right. They don't. They just say. My wife knew about this because oh here's the moral of this movie the moral of this movie is if you have a crazy annoying religious relative and we all have one don't lie you should listen to them because if you don't you're screwed and your pastor is probably lying to you and <laughs> doesn't believe in god and that's kind of a great twist though by it, the way. although although <laughs> I'll um, it that much oh my goodness i can do this i'll lean up i've seen that same character in the other series too that was better too. <laughs> and Mother Teresa, though, she lost her faith too. Like there are letters from Mother Teresa. At I the actually end heard of it. about that. Yeah. And I, I, we did, I covered it in a, one of my religious studies classes, and she straight up just hated God by the end <laughs> of her life. So we actually got that little shoe in. So like, I, I mean, like. I actually would have been interested in that. That actually should have been the focus of the movie. I would have been way more invested in what his personal journey was. <laughs> there were some really interesting characters. I want to know about the Islamic guy oh, on yeah. the flight. <laughs> like, why do we ha We have token terrorist guy who... Ha they even do this whole thing about him supposedly having a gun in his And that bag. was weird. It really the way that was. was shot was really weird. Okay, because what happens is there's this uh, short guy who was like, I, he was in The Love Guru. I forget the actor's name. He's like the little short, the token short guy that whenever they need a short guy, they call him. You know, that kind of thing. I know he's in Scrubs for a while. He was really, I actually liked him in that. But anyway, uh, but he suspects the Muslim guy of causing this whole thing, because of course he does. And it looks like a part where he's digging through the... Uh, while the Muslim guy's not looking, the small guy digs through his bag, and he's, the Muslim guy sees what he's doing, freaks out, grabs the bag, and it looks like he's pointing out a gun. But at the exact same time, he flashed back to Nicolas Cage's daughter, who's, kind, I guess, kind of the main hero in this movie. And uh, At I, least I know her name. Uh, what's her name? Chloe. Chloe, that was it. Yeah, because I said like 500 million exactly. times. Exactly, uh, Chloe! <laughs> Chloe! Chloe! We Call need Chloe! Chloe. <laughs> uh, but, anyway, and it comes to her, as she's like walking by a bank, this is when, like, apparently as soon as people start disappearing, everyone goes, whoa, mooting time, push! Which I'm assuming they're trying to make commentary on the only people who are left are the bad people in the world? I guess? I'm. That's the only way, because the first time I saw it, when that started, I went, wow, these people have never met other humans ever, ever. Because that the first thing that everyone would be doing is, is my family safe? Yeah, not like, let's just take everything. And at least, even if some people would do that, not 99% of them. Like, 99% of them would be like, oh, God, yeah, is my family, my family okay. okay? And then, on top of, so, it flashes back to her walking past a bank as, like, a 
burglar just goes flying through a bank window and like I swear to god it might as well be the bank manager from the dark night it right. <laughs> comes out with a shotgun less good acting. I know it's just this guy with like a mullet and a beard and it looks really pissed off and, and he took a shotgun to this guy he took a sh I, I, I just wanted to say all your friends are dead <laughs> you know who you're stealing from <laughs> that would have been so awesome <laughs> but it didn't happen unfortunately not but it was and then we come back to the Muslim guy and he has an electric toothbrush yeah and I mean I totally get what they're doing what and they have all of these token people you have the guy who sounds like he's from Texas who's only worried about money and he then, even has like the little beat of them yeah and, and then and you shit. have um the the wife and daughter of the big football player who happens to be African-American. Like, there are so many stereotypes. The really, really smart guy who's talking about, uh, like, the De Department of Defense and designing new technology is Asian with glasses on. And believes in Area 51. And, oh my god, this movie made a Langolier reference. And I, <laughs> I couldn't tell if I was happy or mad to see that in there. Uh, but you have all, you have the foreign beauty who wears the dark glasses, who's a to drugs you have all of these people in first class <laughs> right for... that's like oh, oh i gotta go back there for a second have you seen the langoliers you know what the langoliers is nope langoliers is a stephen king's mini it was a stephen king book that got turned into a mini series about this plane that got caught in a space time continuum portal i have definitely seen it yeah and went back in time and got eaten by evil pac-man Yep, I, I I know which I did not know the name of it, but I have seen all of those terrible Stephen King direct to television yeah. movies. And I just know, Although like, the stand was good. The, the stand same. Was okay, I've not seen the stand, good. but you I heard it's good. It's long, but it's good. I just know like there's a part of the Asian guy who goes, Maybe we got stuck in like a space time continuum where everyone else in the plane didn't exist. Like, oh please make a fucking Langley reference. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, it is but you have like there are so many token characters oh in yeah it. they are all token characters so bad and then we have just some confusing characters some of the scene like us like which ones the journalist oh yeah I yeah i don't get the, the journalist like, okay. could have been an author i would have been okay with that but apparently there is some investigative journalist guy named chad i remember his name his name was chad i don't think his no, name it was chuck was. it was chuck something was a ch no, it was Buck, but that's, Buck! But I was that's close. not his name. His name starts with a C. It's like Connor. So, oh, anyway, it doesn't matter. It's, yeah, everyone, Apparently everyone else in the movie knows who he is. Yeah, and I mean to the point where the lady knew that they were holding the airplane for him to get on at the beginning and knew him by his name and like comes over and chats with him. You know what's made this movie way better? If it had the insane guy from the Langoliers in this movie. You, you know, yeah. they just have like a, I have a meeting probably at 10 o'clock. Well, they kind of had it with the senile lady. They're, they're supposed to be so many weird moments in this movie. They're <laughs> supposed to be comic relief characters. The short fellow was supposed to be comic relief. The senile old woman was supposed to be comic relief. She only has like two lines. And the timing of 99% of them is so wrong. It's not funny it's just this movie the way it's paced everything about it is just so bizarre and so off-putting that it's really hard to talk like the movie even starts out just weird because we start talking nicholas cage's daughter uh, chloe gets off an airplane to surprise her dad uh for his birthday only to find out that he got booked for another flight to london but as he's walking over there, he runs into uh, Buck, whatever the fuck his name is, uh, getting ambushed by this religious woman for no apparent reason that I can think of. Well, she, other than the fact that he, she wants to rant at him about being at all of these, like, he's, again, investigative journalist, which... Investigative journalist does not mean what they're making it mean. Yeah. He was just a guy who worked uh, internationally and did coverage of disasters. Investigative journalists is where you uncover things, not where you cover disaster. Oh, he, they're they're very... No, no, you don't understand. He's uncovering all kinds of things. He's uncovering in the land of the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> he's uncovering the Lord's work, work play. I don't know. I, it was... And, <laughs> and just like, no. And so she comes up to him and he's like, how do you come to terms with all of these it's bad like, things? No, that's not how she's acting. She's acting like really pompous about it too. Like, have you heard the Bible? 
But revelations. Like, she's almost got to do the snap thing. <laughs> I was like, dude, God, and I the, really. And then Chloe just comes out of nowhere and, like, tears this lady a new one for <laughs> no reason. Just to None be a dick. <laughs> like, it's like, okay, yeah, she's being a jerk. And I think we've all had those moments where, regardless of whether or not you're of a faith, there are just those people who take whatever faith they belong to, Christianity or any of them, and kind of try and hit you with it until you just have it lodged in your brain and you don't really fight it anymore. Yeah, pretty and much. So, but the thing is, is you just accept them and you understand that they just don't get it and you leave them alone. You don't fuel that fire. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things like, I, to be quite frank, everyone, I don't give a shit what you believe. <laughs> it's one of those things. It affects me in zero way whatsoever. Respect the fact that I believe what I believe. I'll respect the fact that you believe, believe. As long as I don't hurt anyone, I don't care. So that's really what it comes down to for me. Viewing Christianity, fine. You're a Muslim, fine. I couldn't care less. That being said, no one in that scene comes comes out looking good. No, I mean, on other than, I mean, a journalist guy comes out of it the best. He was just like the innocent bystander until he goes and hunts down Chloe and is like, hey. Hey, baby. <laughs> I'm going to be the awkward love interest of this movie. Exactly. Let's have awkward conversations. And it is such an awkward conversation. It is 100% that time where... You have the awkward person come up to you and really, really want to be really, really friendly and you really don't want to, <laughs> and they're not taking no for an answer. Like, he straight up invites himself to sit down at her coffee table, like, throws her jacket on the floor <laughs> and just proceeds to be like, can I buy you a drink? She's like, no. Can I buy you a drink? No. He's like, how about I buy you a drink and a packet of jam? Because that's definitely the selling point. Of course. And, yeah. and it's just like, what? What? Oh, you, no! You even missed the best part. You, you stepped out for a second to make a phone call, and meanwhile, uh, she runs into her dad right before she gets on her flight, right, his flight, and uh, they sit down and have a conversation, and it's talking about, I guess, they have issues with their mom, because she's, like, discovered religion hardcore, and she's forcing it down everyone's throats, and everyone's getting sick of it, because who wouldn't? I'm sorry. It's one of those things, you can only put up with that for so long. And again, I don't care what you believe, but don't shove it down my throat. Um, but anyway, and <laughs> there's a part... Where Nicholas Cage looks dead face, looks at her and goes, Well, she's gonna have another man in her life, and might as well be Jesus. So. <laughs> I really am kind of sad I missed that one. <laughs> it's like his best line in the movie. That was like, I was, that's when I kind of started recording. What? And then I had to control myself because I forgot that there were people in the theater. <laughs> and, and unfortunately for us, we got the old Sami people in the theater. And that's kind of the crowd that this movie is going to yeah. draw. And I swear to you, I have never seen someone look so angry as this lady who is sitting in front of us. So yeah. at that point, I was like, okay, I'm going to watch the movie. I don't need to watch it from outside. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I admit I have a tendency to get a little carried away sometimes. So. And I have done the same thing, but <laughs> Death Glare Lady was not, in fact, staring at you, but was staring at me. And I was like, <laughs> what am I supposed to do? <laughs> Tell me to shut up, apparently, and it worked. Because, <laughs> like, oh, I feel bad now. <laughs> okay, I'm, okay. Sure. I'm not saving you from anything, lady. <laughs> you already left behind, too. <laughs> yeah, you paid money to see this. <laughs> we're, all, we're all the apocalypse victims here. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, fuck. Oh, and for whatever reason, Journalist Man is on the same flight as her dad. Yeah, go like, figure. Like, coincidence. Oh, and here's what I probably forgot to mention, though, is after her dad gets up to go on the plane, he's just camped out on the table next to him. And as soon as he leaves, he goes back over and goes, Hey. That sounded bad. <laughs> Let me sit back over here now. <laughs> yeah, this guy is really kind of creepy at the he beginning. Kind of is. And yet, we're supposed to feel like they have some kind of connection by the time they get in there. Oh, and at some point in time along this, after Nicolas Cage actually leaves to get on the airplane and really gets on the airplane, they end up having some random guy in those carts. You know when you go in the airport and if you have to get from one side to the other and it's a long walk and you have some sort of uh, physical impediment that doesn't allow you to do that, they'll like cart you over there? Mm. Well, one of those guys just stops, knows Chloe by name, and is like, hey, I got some U2 tickets for your dad. Oh, yeah, I forgot about it. I forgot what was the name, Jerry? I don't <laughs> even know what his name is. This guy in a golf cart goes like, Burr! hey, here's those U2 tickets your dad wanted. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> he's like, it took me two weeks to get him. And she's just like, Two weeks, and therefore tomorrow. Yeah, because apparently she's gonna, apparently Nicholas Cage is cheating on his wife. Is going to be. They haven't actually cheat. cheated on one another because this movie is another one of those that sets everything up for you, kind of as you're walking into it. He takes off his wedding ring before he gets on the plane. 
So we know that this is going to be a thing. And then we have porno music when he meets his stewardess. It's really We're not even exaggerating. It's downright, it's business time music. And and she's like putting on really red lipstick and like, oh my God, that lady needs to get a shirt that is slightly larger. Like just (laughs) slightly. The entire time I was just waiting for buttons to start popping. (laughs) And sadly it would have improved the movie vastly. Boobs would have helped. (laughs) I'm a girl and they would have helped. I knew the reason I liked you. <laughs> I'm learning more and more. It's like, damn, you're perfect. All right. Something, anything. No, I, I actually agree. <laughs> the risk sounded like a pig. You said it first. So I'm not, I don't feel bad. <laughs> I'm not going to get left behind. <laughs> well, that number you ride, so you're not leaving anyway. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take the light rail. <laughs> No, you won't. It's like 10 o'clock at night. I've done it. Really? That flight runs at night? I didn't know that. They run until like 1 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, really? Yeah. Okay. Learned something today. All right. Anywho. <laughs> anywho. All right. Where's... So. Obviously, the movie is very gripping if this is how the review is going. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. At this point, there's so much bad things you can mention and talk about. It's just hard to pick one. It's like the acting was terrible. Oh, yeah. The lighting was terrible. The cinematography was terrible. The everything was the music choices were terrible. It really was, and I I know at this point you're probably just like, please shut up about it. But it was supposed to be direct to TV. Like no one could tell me any different. You, no one can. Maybe maybe in the early '90s, maybe it would have been acceptable. We are in 2014. No. I mean, you know the only reason this got theatrical release is because Nicolas Cage is in it. I know, and he was. He looked so depressing in this movie. <laughs> He's like fat and unhappy. Like there was only one part we got close to a cage rage moment. I was so disappointed in follow through. But it was so that moment was the highlight of the entire movie. He just tells someone to sit down and shut up. And just, <laughs> no, he's like, sit down, sir. <laughs> sit and down and fat. Like <laughs> it's so good. You like want him just to it's like yes. And, and yes, the thing is, no. is, because this is an extremely, extremely Christian movie. There is next to no, there is no swearing. There is There is next to no violence at all, other than the guy flying through the window. Mm. And so it just, it lacks the satisfying. I think, you know, this is another one of those. I really didn't think I was ever going to say this either. (laughs) But there needs to be more Michael Bay. Oh my God. (laughs) Oh my God. I would love to see a Michael Bay Christian Apocalypse movie. Wouldn't that be so good? That would be the best train wreck I've ever seen. We've already gotten dinosaurs happening in Transformers, so let's just go for Jesus. Transformer Jesus. (laughs) We kind of got that in Transformers 2. But not exactly. Kind of. But I mean, I want. Optimus Prime, he is Transformers Jesus. I know. And he even died and was resurrected, but we're not getting into that. That's like another movie. (laughs) What about about Transformer gods? (laughs) Maybe they're chilling up with God. Maybe they're playing up Left Behind. (laughs) It's actually all robots. Wouldn't that be a fantastic twist? Oh my god, I'd be I mean, so I, I, From what I understand from the book series, the book series gets really fucking weird after a while. Because like, I think uh, it's like after the first book, they clearly had no idea what the author wanted to go with it, so they just kind of make, made shit up. And it just getting weirder and weirder. Towards the like, part where like, Jesus comes in and uh, he leads an army of people. I don't know, it's really bizarre. I'm just going to go with it. But no, I, I thoroughly believe we could use some more explosions and we could use some more boops. And I think Michael Bay would have been the perfect match for this. Well, it's like, here's the, even the explosions do happen. They're so oddly placed that it just makes no sense. Like, the, the climax of the movie. By the way, this is the climax of the movie. And this is, even that is so fucking boring. Is the fact that... Um, at this point, Nicolas Cage uh, is trying to fly his plane, his co-pilot's gone, he's fi- figured out by a, a sample size of two people that this is all because of the rapture. Yeah, and I love how it is literally two people. Like, he doesn't go out and ask any of the passengers, are your family men- members Christian? Like, hardcore Christian. Nope, just like, two people. One has like a, the watch that had the John, John 316, and like the other had has like a, a Bible. Bible study at like 7.30 on Sunday. And he goes, my God. It must be the rapture. My wife tried to re- tell me about But this. he never says rapture. Yes. No one in this movie ever comes out and says, this is the rapture. It's like in The Walking Dead, how no one's allowed to say the word zombie. You're just like, the white elephant in the room that's happening over here. The <laughs> white elephant? Why does it have to be white? Because that's the term. Oh, I, always thought, I always heard elephant in the room. I didn't know there was a color association with it. 
It probably doesn't have a color association. I think I'm actually mixing two things. Like I said, my brain is just going to go downhill. <laughs> it started this morning. You are on the tail end of a losing battle. <laughs> this movie didn't help. No. No, I, I seem to get these really fantastic movies. <laughs> well, Box Trolls was good. It really was. <laughs> to be fair, you said, I'll go see whatever. And I will. And no one volunteered for this one. So it's like, all right, you asked for it. Hey, man. I have sat through some terrible movies. Like I said, this does not... What is that? <laughs> that is a camouflage car. In blue. <laughs> Fantastic. Sorry. I mean, this is much better. I mean, like, this is... This makes Annabelle look good. I just saw that one yesterday. This makes... This is so so much worse in comparison. Well, I don't... There's... There's just... It has nothing. It has no production value. It has... No, it has no nothing. redeeming qualities. I can't think of one thing I liked about this movie. It had some pretty <laughs> cool fire effects at the very, very, very end where she leaves the Zippo down. Yeah, but even then, that's weird because, like, that's what I was gonna talk about. Thank you for reminding me. Is like that the uh, Nicholas Cage can't find her one way because she can't talk to anyone on the ground because apparently everyone in the freaking control booth is religious. Apparently, no, we found one guy. We found one guy, but even then, he just kind of disappears. And uh, so, so, oh, because you can't land in the airplane. I don't understand why satellites disappear and reappear on a whim. Because as far as I know, satellites are not, in fact, religious. <laughs> that we know of. I don't know. Maybe while he's up there, maybe he found religion. Uh, uh, maybe if you're out in outer space and you're a satellite, you find God. Oh, maybe it's that Transformer in Transformers 2, the one that took the place of the satellite. Yeah! <laughs> maybe that's C the secret crossover. Clearly, we are actually lighting this all up to be our, our our story is way better than the one we got. <laughs> we'll rewrite it. We will make the third reboot, and it will be so much better. Because we'll have robots and dinosaurs <laughs> and explosions and Optimus Prime <laughs> right, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> and he's going to hit people instead of with a sword. It's going to be a giant crucifix. And Nicolas Cage is going to fight Satan. <laughs> Not just any Satan, the South Park Satan. <laughs> with Osama Bin Laden as his bitch. <laughs> oh, so Played better. by Channing Tatum. <laughs> <laughs> let's Please, let's do that. <laughs> okay, I, if anyone knows Photoshop or animates, please make that image, that poster for me <laughs> and send it to me. I will make that my profile picture on the group page and my page for like a month. <laughs> that would be so good. Oh my goodness. Uh, it's probably, I'd be amazed if it actually happens. One day I was like, Dude, guys, 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 you're going to believe this. But anyway, ah, oh God. And so... Chloe magically gets a phone call in there after they've had so many failed attempts. She just calls them and boom. And the best part is, is her dad is not the one calling her. Yeah, it's Buck. Because of, and he hasn't just been calling her for a little while. Apparently the entire time this has been happening, hmm. he has just been attempting to call Chloe. Because apparently he got a number. I don't, did they ever exchange numbers? I don't he think they did. He said that he wanted her number, but I never actually saw the... Neither did I. Except so. for the guy who we meet for two lines at the beginning who's like, did you get her number? Oh, yeah. Uh, token black guy who disappears after the first act of the movie. Who they make really terrible jokes about his weight. Yes, because he wears a tracksuit. Because of course he does. Way to, <sighs> way to really play it gently here, guys. Yeah, they did such a good job. <laughs> so anyway, and then Chloe realized like, oh wait, I think I found some space for you because I magically know how to ride a mo motorcycle now. That was good. <laughs> Not only does she know how to ride a motorcycle, she knows how to use a steamroller. Yeah. And drive a truck. Like all of it. So she finds like this empty freeway or something. Which like was shown site. at the beginning of the movie. Was that actually shown at the movie? That, oh, they actually foreshadowed that? <laughs> that's what I'm telling you. Like this stuff, this movie is one of those movies. It like gives you the pieces. But you forget all about the pieces, so really it's like uh, Grandma came up and swallowed one of the pieces. And yeah. then you're just like wondering what the hell happened. Yeah, yeah. Now my, my elephant puzzle what can't be nearly finished, ever. <laughs> yeah, so road construction, because that's always a good option. Like, we're going back the speed route. We're definitely... And then, like, go climax is the plane approaching while she's trying to clear the one way. And one point, like, as, like, a steamroller's in the way, but when we have the speed of smell... So we had the action like, oh, come on, come on, come on, as the plane gets closer. Eventually, even she gets bored. She just traps like the yeah, seatbelt around it. Just leaves it there. So the plane lands, and of course... Uh, oh, no, 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 so that she can, so that her dad can see it. Before oh, yeah. She asks if flashing her high beams <laughs> is going to be enough. It's like, no. No, honey, that's not going to do it. Even, <laughs> even the people around us who had maybe laughed once in the entire movie started chuckling at that one because it was that dumb. So dumb. I mean, just so, so she decides to instead 
blow up a gas tank. It worked. <laughs> but the city is literally on fire. I just see the boom. And so the... that is going to be their cue. And that could not possibly be anything else happening well, other than her. Like, I was kind of chuckling to myself, too, because, like, he's flashing back to uh, Buck and Nicolas Cage in the... Uh, in the cockpit and it keeps showing like the guy line say is we're getting closer we're getting closer i need to see the visual like you guys haven't moved that skyline hasn't moved i i'm still really <laughs> fond of the minutes. fact that it has no idea what time of day it is oh yeah there is that too there's the scene where chloe is attempting to commit suicide and is saved by buck calling her on the phone because of course he is she, of, <laughs> of course. course like that we knew that was coming but she's like standing on the top of this bridge that she magically was able to get on the top of and it is this beautiful like sunrise moment where it's just it's lovely it's totally done on green screen because you can tell it's yeah, the lighting course, yeah. but you're like okay well you know then trying to play the pretty much the one almost decent song in the whole movie and then immediately she gets down from it after talking to buck and realizing that killing herself is not a good idea and it is pitch black like, well that's how she gets back down it's yeah apparently the sun has decided we're done. No, we're no, done. We're just we're, stop, stop, and just stuff happens like that. Like they hit this other airplane in the air, randomly, and they look at the wing afterwards, and there's nothing wrong with the wing. We cut back to it, and the wing is now torn open and spraying fuel. Actually, it was torn open before. It's hard to see, but it was actually torn apart. There was no fuel, but it was actually. There but was at the one. very first, when they look at it, oh, I okay. swear there is yeah. one scene. It was just for a brief cut where it isn't. Same thing with the lady whose car gets run into the mall. When oh, you first yeah. see her arm, her arm <laughs> is not bloody. The second time you see her arm, her arm is like. Ah, Nick Nari in like the five second span you looked away. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's just it's uh, not good. And then that catches on fire. Because <laughs> why not? <laughs> and I love the fact that even sh they, they just set up all these these like explosion things. And then it doesn't do anything. I, and honestly, it's like, okay, well, that was that was cool. Like it's like uh, the, it goes on fire. It's like Dude, the plane's on fire. Oh, just let it run. It'll go out. And it does. It's like, okay. <laughs> and then we nick, when we when they land the plane, the wing nicks a fuel thing. Which goes into like a fuel canister, which explodes as our character, our, like the daughter is dramatically running, running next to it. And she's and it's slow shots for that too. And she's like sopping wet at this point for some really unapparent reason. And yeah, she's been doing a lot of running, so she could be sweaty. <sighs> But she's like artistically damp. <laughs> artistically damp. <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> Not naturally damp. <laughs> There's so many jokes I'm gonna give about that. None of them are appropriate. <laughs> Not for a Christian movie. <laughs> exactly. God will smite you. <laughs> no, I mean Morgan Freeman are cool. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Have you met the man? In exactly. my dreams. In my dreams. <laughs> if he's God, I'm sure he probably have. <laughs> It's like, dude, how's Jim Carrey? Uh, and then See we you get to my light too. <laughs> and then we get to this really fantastic moment where Chloe sees these people is looking around, and, and the, the first person she sees, sees is Buck, and runs screaming, I... "Buck, <laughs> hold me! You're alive! I can't believe you're alive!" Doesn't even bother asking about her dad at all. Well, like, nope, don't care. But then again, he is kind of an adulterer. And Kind of a douchebag. He's still her dad. I'm just saying. <laughs> like, I'm trying to find a redeeming factor. <laughs> there are no then. redeeming factors here. This has 2% of Rotten Tomato, and the first time I agree with that low percentage. Yeah. Yeah. It deserves every low percent, every bad review it deserves. I want to see the one good review that says, well, it's not Birdemic. <laughs> That, that's kind of like the redeeming factor that I got as well. I, I have seen worse. Yeah. But normally they involve mutant creatures attacking stuff. I would so. made this movie better. <laughs> I, I, I agree. I mean, we should add some. I think we should absolutely just take a big red marker to the left behind book and just go, nope, <laughs> need dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> need, definitely. Need, if we're going to do the apocalypse, let's do the apocalypse. Like, if we're going to do something this stupid, let's really just go balls to the walls. Let's, let's, let's go have, like, nuts. Let's have some plagues happening. Here. Let's, <laughs> let's unleash Mammon and have him walk across the earth or something. I think the famines actually happened in the books. No. Oh, mammon, like What's... one of the princes. Help, never mind. Okay, you 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 jump went over my head reference wise there. But... You need to go and you need to sit down. You need to read yourself some Paradise Lost. 
Okay. So homework assignment people, <laughs> someone read Paradise Lost and send me the wiki page. <laughs> John Milton, it's a classic. <laughs> it's like the first sympathetic devil. <laughs> I'm called the comic nerd, not the letter nerd. <laughs> No, I do like books. I just want to point that out there. But I just have not read that one. Uh, it's old. I don't blame you. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, anyway, it's, is there anything else to talk about? No. <laughs> oh, what about the crazy gun lady? Which, apparently she got the gun off the air marshal. Yeah, that was the part I'm, I'm kind of glad they did explain that Yeah, because I would have uh, been like, where did she get that gun? Because... And I also am glad they explained why that guy had a badge. Which part? Which guy? The air marshal. Oh, yeah. Because his clothes had a badge, and I was like, what, what, what? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so what happens is the wife, though, like the wife of the football player, just randomly, out of nowhere, just freaks the hell out. She was already freaking out, but she calmed down, and then randomly again, just, like... Just uh, sparks out and says, this is all a conspiracy. You're all trying to take my daughter away. She I don't know why I'm talking like Batman. <laughs> <laughs> she assumes that her husband, who thinks that she's crazy, like, drugged her, landed the plane, took her daughter, and paid everyone on the plane to say that all of these people had disappeared. It, It's someone who just went through a great trauma and is trying to find some reason. Is it better where she's pointing the gun and is like, you trapped me here for a Langolier reboot, didn't you? I, yeah. That would have been a legitimate reason to point gun people. And she just, I don't know, it's not, it's not very good. And then she attempts to kill herself by shooting herself in like the organs, which is a really poor place to shoot yourself. Shoot yourself in the head. If you're going to do it, do it right. <sighs> Did you really just <laughs> advocate <laughs> proper suicide methods? <laughs> well, I mean, do you want to sit there and, like, bleed out all over the floor? It's a terrible way to go. <laughs> <laughs> I can't judge. I've said worse. <laughs> I just sat for that I mean, movie. I, I mean, I kind of agree <laughs> in a really harsh way. I was like, yeah, you can do better. I mean, it's, it's like doing, like, the horizontal versus the vertical slides. Like, no, you got to do good vertical, man. That's much more ready to get job done. And also in terms of a movie trope, people don't shoot themselves like that. Even if, I mean, like... That's why we can't even get movie tropes right. Okay, you, <laughs> shoot, you point the gun at your head, not at your, like, <laughs> s scarf. Yeah, and then, like, there's the part where the bipedal plane just comes right the hell out of nowhere and crashes in the car right next to Nicolas Cage's... Uh, no, it crashes no, into the back of Nicolas Cage's car. Oh, that's what happened. That's why she couldn't drive. Okay, I think I kind of tuned out around that point. I was still laughing, like, ha, 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 there's a plane falling out of nowhere. Because we had to have an airplane fall so that it got her in the mindset of her dad in the airplane. Of course. Foreshadowing. Fantastic. Told you. Yeah. It's one of those movies. It's still, it's still ridiculous. <laughs> oh, God. That's why we had the fish. The god fish. <laughs> of course, yeah. The magic medallion. And then it's like the annoying bro little brother. I've never seen a person run that stupid in all of my life. Because he was one of those, hey, little, hey, big sister. <laughs> it's like, oh, please kill him. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of dies. He kind of dies, yeah. He's like one of the first people to get taken. Uh, uh, so we could use Liam Neeson. That's why I was just like, we could use some taken. <laughs> in fact, Liam Neeson is Zeus. He could very easily just switch over to God. <laughs> no, he should be the one who's going to get all the people back from God. Like, you know what should happen is... Batman should be Jesus, <laughs> and, and Liam Neeson should be his wisecracking sidekick. <laughs> Why can't Liam Neeson be Batman? Well, he could be Batman Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Liam Neeson doesn't need to be Batman, he needs to be Liam Neeson. <laughs> he was already Ra's al Ghul, so I gotta worry work. That's true. You already fought Batman. That is also true. Our movie's way better than the one we watched. <laughs> I know, it just keeps getting better. <laughs> Just add weird shit in there, see what sticks. We should do a Kickstarter and make our Yes! <laughs> Get Nicolas Cage, apparently he'll do anything if you give him 20 bucks in a Twix bar. <laughs> That's the only reason oh, I... No, what will you do for a Klondike bar? <laughs> I'll start a Left Behind reboot. <laughs> yeah, I'll do your movie. <laughs> Can Zor Zor all be in there? <laughs> That's why he's put on so much weight. He's done all these acting jobs for Klondike. So I guess uh, I think I leaned over to you one point and was like, this movie would have been way better if it was a Ghost Rider sequel. It really would have. Because <laughs> that would have been amazing. Just uh, him on fire. <laughs> Just him on fire killing everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. He should be a rider of the apocalypse. He should be war. 
Yes! This should, this should be the next X-Men movie. <laughs> he can either be war or he can be death. Either one's fine. <laughs> Nic- oh my goodness. Nicholas Cage do, being death. Do the smog thing. I am fire. I, I am, am death. Fire. I am death. <laughs> and then just like cut open the airplane. <laughs> I don't know. Do you see the behind-the-scenes shots of Nicolas Cage during Ghost Rider 2? He's more scary than Ghost Rider is. Because <laughs> he did the whole face paint. Like, it's face paint, like, it's black with, like, skull face paint. It's fucking terrifying. Because, <laughs> like, oh, let's watch the deleted scenes. That'll be fun. Jesus Christ! <laughs> What the fuck is that? <laughs> Jesus has nothing to do with this. <laughs> oh, God. I'm Jesus. <laughs> Once again, I don't actually remember much of the movie we just watched. <laughs> At this point, no. It's kind of. We've just remade it. Uh, Trust us when we say our version's better. Much. Needs more robots. All right, so I guess we'll move on to trailers. I think we should probably move on to trailers. I think that the poor viewers are going to be like, no, we're done. We're, we've stopped. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they've really enjoyed our interpretation. Uh, tell us in the comments you made it this far. <laughs> no one has made it this far. You have been claimed by the rapture. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if God is real, I'm going to get some good shit for this review. <laughs> God's gonna come there. Morgan Freeman's gonna sit in his desk. <laughs> it's like, well, Michael, I was gonna let you in today, but uh, I saw your Left Behind video. <laughs> yep, <Yeah>, I'm doomed. <laughs> and, uh, and that Spider Man video, too. I didn't much prove that, so. Uh, it's okay. I'll, I'll hang out with Satan. Apparently, we can sing the Broadway songs together, you know. Somewhere up there. <laughs> trailers, dude. Trailers. All right, trailers, trailers. Sorry. Uh, speaking of Jesus and God and all that, uh, this is a Christian movie, so be prepared. Uh, technically, it's technically Jewish, but really, technically, I know, but we're really gonna do this. Well, okay, I'm not gonna. Okay, fair exactly. enough. Uh, so first one we got was Exodus, God and Kings. I think it's gonna called. Yeah, we have Batman <laughs> fighting some Egyptian guy. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I can't wait for the joke movie. Yeah, no, and there there's some bad special effects and a blue burning bush and the person who's telling him these things is God. Oh yeah, I mean that's the Moses story. So I what... know, but that's what I got out of the trailer. That is that's what I got. It actually tells you more than the first trailer I saw for this. Game. I know this. We actually got things like God being involved in the first. Yeah, and they actually God. had Christian Bale with a big bushy beard, which is kind of interesting to see. So I was wondering how we were gonna go from them still being brothers to. Well, because, like, oddly enough, like, there's no way I'm going to watch the movie and not compare it to Prince of Egypt, which is by and far a much different movie, but it covers the same subject material. I'm going to bet it has did it better, too. Probably. Because this one looks like it's trying to be, like, Gladiator meets Moses, well, and it's weird. Well, it was directed by... By Ridley Scott, yeah. And it's, like, the second Ridley Scott Bible movie I'll probably just sit through this year, because he also directed Noah. <laughs> so, apparently, it's, like, a reoccurring thing. He's going down the Bible classic stories. So I'm expect I'm totally expecting a Job movie because I don't think anyone's done it before. Someone should do it. Job would actually be pretty interesting. I know, right? Because we like a total weird apocalypse movie. <laughs> kind of awesome. You could make it very strange. You can make it very dark. I I kind of want to see a Job movie now, <laughs> but we can put that on our Kickstarter list. There we you make go. This one and we'll make Job. <laughs> And so then we got Interstellar, a much more expanded trailer. I, I'm gonna say I think things were actually pretty good. I have done a little bit of research on Interstellar. I'm not going to tell the people, yeah. but its plot looks like someone took acid and wrote it. That might be okay. <laughs> and I'm not, yeah, again, I'm not saying it's bad, but it's just like, okay. I love the fact that we have walking leg robots, metal box. Yeah, I noticed robot that too. I was like, thing. that just looked weird. That was really awkward. It reminded me of um, from Alice in Wonderland, the animated one. Oh, the original okay. one. Yeah. <laughs> there's the there's the little I cannot think of their the names of them, but they're the two. They have eyes on them and they're like little legs and they like make signs for Alice at the end of the movie when she gets really 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 lost. And it yes. says don't step on the thing. Yeah, yeah. That's like, totally what very, I got. I haven't seen the animated Disney movie in years, but yeah, I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, and it looks just like them, but made out of metal and noise. Yeah, either way, it's like it's got like new age good Matthew McConaughey so I, I, I will definitely see it I think it looks interesting I think it's Christopher Nolan so it's one of those things it's, even it's his gonna hurt bad your, movies are interesting yeah it's gonna hurt your brain but go for it I don't know it could be good I'm, I'm getting, nothing else looks trippy as all hell I'm really gonna it's one of those movies from, like from what I've read that you're definitely gonna get it's that it's one of those movies like where you watch the trailer it's like yeah I have no idea where this is going I'm actually really curious <laughs> the, the original trailer was even more like I don't 
No, yeah. I, I just, I don't. At least this time we didn't have him saying goodbye to Murphy for the entire trailer. That's true. We did not get that. So, I'm, I'm, I'm up for, oh, God. Deep breaths, deep breaths. We'll be fine. <laughs> How many freaking Christian movies I've sent through this year? So, we got this very interesting trailer for a movie called Saving Christmas. Which... Well, they're, they're going to put Christ back in Christmas. And it doesn't really explain how that's going to happen. I don't know. It says, well, there's this place we know of where Christmas is really what it's supposed to be. And all those Jesus-y things. And, they... and there's like some weird, like... I... like, I don't know. It was weird. Like, look up the trailer because it's fucking bizarre. And there's not really a way that I can explain what I just saw. Yeah. Cause you there's just... some guy in like a Christmas sweater. Yeah, and like some, who's ranting like, on about pagan traditions and the fact that Christmas isn't Christmas anymore. Yeah, and they and that's when the art I'm narrator. I'm surprised. I'm really surprised they didn't go on the fact that December 25th is Mithra's birthday, and then we could get into Mithraism with like Roman. I don't think they're ready to go there yet. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's I think it's a little too deep for this particular movie. I'm just saying, like <laughs> if you're gonna bring in the pagan tree thing. You might as well bring in Mithra. Uh, I, I'd be totally down for that. Uh, Mithra is a man cult. That was like the Roman soldier cult. It would be awesome. <laughs> I'm sorry, you keep saying Mithra. I keep, I wish my brain automatically trains out to Mothra, which no, I would wait, also wait, love wait. seeing this movie. <laughs> that would be pretty cool too, but no, we're not going the Jap like the Japan round at all. Not until no, the next no. Godzilla movie anyway. Uh, I didn't see the last one, or the one before that, or any of them ever. Well, the old ones are hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> I love them all to death. Um, but yeah, that one looks really weird, really bad. So yeah, I mean, again, if I think that that unless you are a very, 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 very Christian person, mm. that is not going to be a movie for you. Yeah, and then did I get this trailer with you a week or two ago? Spare parts? No. Okay, I got someone else because I, I, cause I, I, I kept thinking that South Park joke where it's just like, how do I reach these kids? And that's kind of what this movie is. It's, yeah. uh, it's George Lopez reaching out to a bunch of uh, the troubled high schoolers who want to build robots. Yeah, and that's movie. The movie. <laughs> movie. And they, they're competing against people like MIT in a robot competition, but they have no money, and so... Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, underdog story. Yeah, we've seen it all before. So, uh, let's go. We got Hillsong, the con another Christian, con uh, Christian concert movie this time around. Yeah, so if you like Christian music, maybe. I, I, I really have no opinion on it, so that's what I'm saying. It's not my taste in music, because personally, if you like it, all the power to you. I don't listen to it, so I don't have an opinion. Fair enough. And this one I'm actually curious about, Unbroken. That's the Angelina Jolie-directed movie. Which I didn't know she was a director, so this yeah, is... Yeah, I guess it's like her first directing, a directorial debut. Okay. It actually looks kind well, of if interesting. Ben Affleck can direct DC movies. I know, right? <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, so it's one of those things, I mean, it looks kind of interesting. I kind of like the ideas, ideas behind it anyway. I like the fact we got some war. War is good. War is good. For Christmas, yeah. <laughs> Compared to what else we had, like, this was the most exciting trailer. This well, one and Interstellar. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things, uh... I was, it's, I'm always kind of fascinated by, you know, willpower and all that kind of stuff. Always it's some stuff Olympic kind of athlete who gets put in a Japanese prisoner of war camp during World War II and gets pushed to the extreme and is, as the name implies, Just has balls unbroken. of steel. He really does. <laughs> and it's kind of super amusing in that sick, twisted sort of way to, like, watch this guy get <laughs> like wrecked. A, like, oh no. <laughs> You're gonna get pounded, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's this scene where uh, they say that he needs discipline, and so they have every single prisoner in the prisoner of war camp punch him and there's and a part, part of just goes hit me <laughs> and he's a <laughs> scrawny little guy too it's actually kind of terrifying he's this really scrawny guy with a really pissed off look in his face that's going go on hit me you bastard give me everything you got it's like i kind of admire that in a weird way I, there, like i said there's something sickly satisfying about watching him get the crap beaten out of him and we only did this for a trailer it was fantastic i know it's like it's actually, a whole movie if nothing else the trailer is really good it is like the rest of the movie might be awful the Trailer? The trailer's Where's really the watch? good. Because <laughs> I don't know, it's like it's always, it's like again, it's kind of like the underdog story, but it's not like they're trying to overcome the odds. He's just trying to survive. Yeah, the whole point is him just surviving and just not breaking from it. And like I've always found that stuff very, very interesting. So I'm, I'm curious about it. I'm very, very curious. It, yeah, it, I don't know. It's fascinating. Yeah. So 
Are we done? Are we yeah, done? we're done. done? <laughs> Don't get so excited. Oh, I didn't want to talk about any more Christian movies, okay? <laughs> Unbro- well, we talked about Broken some more. That's not a Christian movie. <laughs> I know, but I was hoping that you weren't going to ruin my Unbroken moment like by breaking it with some Christianity there. <laughs> I could probably just end this left behind. Don't go see it. <laughs> yeah, just don't. I'll probably end up reviewing this one day for like an actual editor review. If you want to see it for grins and giggles, just wait until you can find it on the internet or the television or whatever your media of choice is. Don't pay money. If just... you're a Nicolas Cage, a rage, a uh, Cage rage fan like me, you're gonna be disappointed. <laughs> yeah, Nicolas Cage. Really, you could have replaced him with Keanu Reeves, and then you would have kind of got a speed movie happening without all the interesting parts. You no, know, I, I would actually. I think it would be better if it was Alec Baldwin. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my goodness, that would. If anything, we get the Glengarry Glen Ross speech. <laughs> <laughs> William Shatner. <laughs> uh, no, there you go. The wing is on fire. There is a fire on the wing. There is a fire on the wing. <laughs> but then I want to see him flirt with the stewardess lady. You can watch Langoliers. There's pretty much a William Shatner in that movie. <laughs> oh, make me happy. Smog. Anyway, <laughs> I think we're done here. So I'll be back tomorrow with Gone Girl. I need a good movie to wash this tape, this movie out of my mouth. <laughs> and then next week uh, we got Dracula. Which that should be fun, <laughs> and then a couple so other movies. So game to watch a terrible Dracula movie. <laughs> uh, I think we're checking that one out Wednesday afternoon, probably. You're welcome to come with if you're available. We'll see. We'll yeah. see what I have. Up. All right. So I think it's. I think we're done here. So we'll see you guys later. <laughs>